Hello everyone and welcome back to another cheapo tech review where I buy tech off certain websites that advertise an item that's probably too good to be true. In the past, I have reviewed a Huawei P20 Pro clone and a Huawei P30 Pro clone, one from eBay and one from Wish. This phone that I'm looking at today is from Joom. Now it's pretty much the same as Wish sort of thing with the whole pricing and, oh, you know, just free pay shipping and all that sort of stuff, you know, the usual Wish garbage. Except the site has a better layout so you can navigate it a little bit more freely than you can on Wish. Pretty much all the stuff is coming from the same place anyways. But while browsing there, just for random products and stuff like that, I came across this clone here. And I love how it's just titled 4,800 milliamp hour smartphone, 6 gig plus 128 gig. Now, obviously it is ripping off a Samsung S10 plus, but we have got specifications promised to us, such as what I've already said, a 4,800 milliamp hour battery, six gigabytes of RAM, 128 gig of ROM, Android 9, a front eight megapixel camera, as well as a rear 16 megapixel camera, but we don't know if it's got USB-C, we really don't know anything. And also, if you have a look at the picture just here, you'll see that there's actually three cameras in this location. Now, I doubt that there's actually a hole punch camera at the top of the unit. I think that might be just a decoration, but I'm not too sure. Uh, but the bezels in the picture look very clean, very small, so... We will have to see, but I paid $144 Australian, which I think is about $100 US at this point in time. It is a bit of a risk spending that amount of money on something that's probably going to be too good to be true. However, Joom has a little bit of a warranty thing where it says, we'll refund your money if the delivered item doesn't match the description. In other words, if I check the specs of this device and it turns out it doesn't have 6 gig of RAM and 128 gig of ROM, which... I'm pretty sure doesn't, that technically means I should be able to get my money back. Now, I know that sounds like a bit of a scam and all that sort of stuff, but look, I want to buy this phone to make sure that people that are trying to look for a really cheap phone don't go with something like this expecting the best and they get, you know, like one gig of RAM and eight gig of storage or something like that. And also in preparation for this video as well, I decided to visit my local cash converter stores to pick up some relatively cheap smartphones. And well, I found these two here. This one on the left is an Alcatel 1V, I believe. And the one on the right here is a Huawei Y7 Prime, also known as a Nova 2E Lite. Both of these devices pack relatively standard specs, with this one being 2 gig of RAM, a quad-core processor, and 16 gig of storage, whereas this one has an octa-core processor, 3 gig of RAM, and 32 gigs of storage. But both of them have dual cameras, fingerprint sensor, and all that sort of stuff. The Alcatel 1V here says $59 on it, however, I got it for $50. They retail for about $200 Australian, locked to a Telstra network. The Huawei here was $75, and I did pay $75 for it, and this is unlocked to all networks. But it just has a crack in the screen here, but that does not affect the usage of it. So I've got these two as a bit of a comparison to see if these devices are going to match closer to this S10 Plus clone that I have, and if camera performance is the same as these, because these aren't too bad, to be fairly honest. Yeah, they have plasticky builds and, you know, micro USB and all that sort of stuff, but, you know, they still do the job. 18 by 9 aspect ratio screens as well, which is always good. But keep these in mind, because I'm pretty sure we're going to need these later on. So with a shipping time of just under two weeks, we have this garbage bag here. The inside, hopefully, has an S10 Plus clone with 6 gig of RAM and 128 gigs of storage. I'm pretty excited to see the hole punch camera on this device if it actually has one and how they implement it, as well as if it actually does have three cameras or two at the back of the phone, who really knows. But let's go ahead and open this up and see what we get. So the device is neatly packed in this styrofoam box here. So if we just lift this off, it reveals. Ah, okay. Oh, okay. This is going to be very interesting. So with the previous Huawei clones that I've had a look at, they come in generic white boxes, but this one, in fact, has information on it. So let's have a look at the info that we have on here, which it says that it is a HD screen, Super AMOLED, high digital camera, 
fair enough. A face recognition and eight core. Available memory capacity subject to preloaded software. For more information on your device, HD voice service. Android is a trademark of Google Incorporated. Rear camera self timer function. HD voice will be available only if your service provider supports recycling and all that sort of stuff. But the box is definitely ripping off the usual Samsung ones. And then coming to the front here, we also have this sticker. There is a QR code and it says on here green 6.1. EU, so I chose a European plug for this model. I imagine this QR code will probably bring you to Joom or something. I'll check during editing anyways. There we also have S10 6.1 EU, which is the plug, and the 6 gig of RAM and 128 gig storage that has been promised, as well as this sticker here, because I chose the gradient sort of green color, which is what is appearing on most phones nowadays. Okay, and opening the box up now, there we have the device. It is actually ripping off the S... I think. Yeah, I'd say it'd be the S10 more so than the S10 Plus. All right, taking this off here, we get some extra goodies. We get some very cheap generic headphones with a very clicky button, very similar to the ones on the Huawei P30 Pro that I reviewed a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, wouldn't use these at all. We also get the power brick here, which is a power adapter, 5 volt at 1 amp, which, yeah, Still wouldn't use these anyways. They wouldn't be safe at all to use. So if you ever get one of these on a cheapo device, probably don't use it. It's not safe. Unless it's like a brand name or something like that, then it's fine. The risk of them shorting out and causing fires and stuff is just extreme. So don't use these. We also get another one in here, which is actually the one for my country. But I still wouldn't use this at all. Now, if we just stop here and have a look at some of the information that is listed here, we see that it is... Uh, quite misspelt in some areas and it reckons that it's 5 volt 2 amp which yeah I doubt very much but both of these are ripping off Samsung chargers as well these are definitely not safe so do not use these at all I'm not even going to plug this in this will probably just stay in the box as a bit of a novelty I guess we also get a USB cable as well but what's interesting is in standards with the S10 it's actually a USB-C cable. So it is a significant jump from the micro USB cables we have seen on the previous ones to now having a USB-C. That is a much welcomed upgrade to have USB-C as that's pretty much what we use nowadays anyways. We also get a case for the device, which is this one here. I don't think this would fit an actual real S10, but I might take it to a store and see if it actually does fit and let you all know if I happen to do that or not. And then last but not least, we have the instruction manual, which is all here. And it's just the usual basic stuff like how to do a call and how to save a contact and all that sort of stuff. There's nothing really important on here. Nothing that we're going to need anyways, because we basically know the functions of the device anyways. Um, I'm pretty sure I don't need to use any of it. So far, I'm happy with the unboxing experience because it's a better box than the previous ones and uh, USB-C. So that's a start. And the device here, I'm fairly sure that it is the same as the S10 in size wise, but we will see. Once again, we get the IMEIs printed on a sticker here, which should be on the box, but they always put them inside of the device for some reason. But uh, we get two IMEIs and the model is S10. We also get another one in the package as well, which is just the same as the previous information, just a small sticker. All right, and finally, the device itself. So it's not so much of a gradient green as I expected, more so around the frame of the device is what I'm seeing. But we have the camera set up here. I think this one might be the real one and these ones are dud ones, I think think. But we will have to see. I'm probably going to tear this down anyways. We definitely know that this piece here is fake. This is usually the heart sensor that is not real. So also this tiny little flash. We also have a bit of plastic over the camera lenses just there. But there's the sort of back of the phone. It, yeah, it does have a little bit of a gradient to it. Not too bad, I guess. All right, that's fair. Moving on to the bottom of the device here, we have the speaker grill, as well as a USB-C port and the headphone jack, antenna bands as well. And going around the device, we can see the power button. The top of the phone here has the SIM card and SD tray here, as well as a secondary microphone, which hopefully should work. And we also have a Bixby button, which presses down, so it would be interesting to see what that does, as well as the volume keys just here. So I'm pretty sure the back panel is glass. We've got a film protector over the back glass, but I'll just make a small scratch here and see if it's plastic or glass. And the answer is, it is glass on the back of this. The main base of the phone feels like aluminium, but we'll just check anyways. 
and unfortunately it is made of plastic, but that was to be expected, of course. I thought it may have been somewhat premium because it does feel quite heavy, but it's not too bad. Then on the front here, finally we get a couple of weird things going on. We get a fingerprint down here, so we'll happy to see if that works. It says that it has four cameras, which will be very interesting. So it's the time, a wallpaper, and it has like a notch sort of thing going on here, and then the camera just there. But obviously, yeah, all that's not going to be relevant at all, but we will see. Before we go ahead and power on the device, let's go ahead and put an SD card and a SIM card in here and remove the SIM card tray. And the setup here is a dual SIM setup or a hybrid setup. You can have one SIM card and one SD card or dual SIMs. So that's okay. Let's populate these and put it back into the phone and power this thing up. Also a very quick note as well, the SIM card tray is actually machined aluminium. You can see the machine grooves in there as well, which is very interesting. All right, so the SD card and SIM card have both been inserted. So let's go ahead and peel off this screen protector here. Revealing an 18 by nine aspect ratio screen. While it's gonna be very hard to see at the moment, we can see that there's a pretty reasonably sized chin here, as well as the top here. You can see the front facing camera just there as well. All right, let's go ahead and pull off this little piece here. And let's go ahead and power on the device and see what we get. Ah, look at that. <laughs> it's another welcome phone. And the, the whole punch up here, it's just, yeah, it's built into the firmware. Well, we debunked that one already. Yep, it just disappears and then it will just reappear. Give it a second. There we go. They're just up there. They will just disappear and reappear whenever they want. Now, I have picked up a 4G signal. It doesn't say 4G on Joom, but we'll test it out and see what it does anyways. On Joom, it states that the screen on this device is HD+, which I would believe may be a 720p display, but we will have to see. But anyways, here it all is here, and it pretty much looks like the Samsung One UI. The screen looks pretty clear so far, so it seems like it's relatively good, but let's keep going and we'll find out, but the display up there see <laughs> hey they tried they tried so flicking up we get all the applications we get a browser calculator calendar clock camera gallery videos music fm radio sound recorder phone contacts messaging email notebook settings file manager downloads play store which is actually the samsung galaxy store logo which is just for the play store instead facebook whatsapp as usual youtube google voice search uh, SIM Toolkit and Google Settings, but um, so far, the interface seems fairly responsive. Okay, so I've just held the main screen. It's some sort of a custom launcher that they've put on top of the stock Android here, most likely, to imitate the One UI. But yeah, just pulling that down, you can see that the hole punch is there, but they do absolutely nothing. It is just built into the firmware to show the illusion that it actually has the dual cameras at the front here. And just to make sure, I've quickly Googled, and yes, this is more ripping off an S10+, Plus, but it's in the size of an S10, so very confusing there. But there's no official branding on here, so it's, yeah, kind of a half-half scenario. All right, let's jump into settings. And I'll connect to my Wi-Fi network, and we'll see what comes up. And it doesn't look like we have any NFC or anything like that. It is just standard Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. All right, so now we're connected to Wi-Fi. We can go through the settings just here. But first, I just want to go to About Phone and see what it says. So here it is here with the model number being S10, Android version 9.1, the CPU being an MT6595, which is an 8-core, 6 gig of RAM, 128 gig storage, and just all the other information. And just checking the SIM status, the cellular network type is only HSPA, which is 3G. So this is not a 4G device, unfortunately, which is a bit of a letdown, but that was to be expected. Okay, let's go through the various settings. So we'll start with sound here, which is just pretty much the profiles, nothing important here. The best audit and best loudness, best surround, previously appeared on the P20 Pro clone and the P30 Pro clone. And they actually do make some enhancements to sound, which is actually fairly good. The display, we can change the wallpaper, battery level, always on display, which actually did come up before, but we'll keep that on. Shining light, what is that? Okay, so we have a notification LED somewhere here, I would imagine. 
So that's fairly good. And we also have a G sensor calibrate, which we're not gonna use at the moment, that's fine. Wallpaper, we can choose different wallpapers and stuff that's built onto the device that mimic the S10. Apps and notifications, we don't have a lot on here actually. Okay, so we've got something called Phoenix. I think that might be the launcher there, but otherwise there's not a lot of processors running. So, and it says here that we have 4.1 gig of RAM, which, okay, fair enough. That's what it says here, but we'll get into the specs and we'll see further. But it doesn't seem like there's a lot of bloatware on here. Seems fairly stock. I don't know, I'm kind of liking this so far. All right, so what I'm gonna do is do the fingerprint management. So we'll just set a pin. Okay, please enter the fingerprint positive. Place the finger on the center of the sensing area. Please lift your finger after pressing. So we'll just go ahead and do this a couple of times. Okay. And so now we have enrolled that and we should have a fingerprint unlock. All right, so let's try. Okay, now let's see if it works with another fingerprint. Use my pinky for it. Unfortunately, it is not an underscreen fingerprint scanner. It is just a fake one, which is to be expected, but it is there. The motherboard probably has a connection for an actual fingerprint scanner to be built onto the back or something. The motherboard's probably reused from something else. Um, but it's good to know that yeah, it's just a fake one, so not secure at all. I'm going to try face unlock as well. So now what I'm going to do is just use the face unlock. And it works. Beautiful. Although a lot of phones have the face unlock feature built in, it's nothing special nowadays. Some phones use a secondary camera to specifically capture a face unlock image, like an iris scanner, but yeah, this one is just a normal one. Uh, but anyways, let's do unknown sources as well, because we're going to install apps. Backup reset is pretty much the same. Um, Smart awakening, which is just the gestures you can draw on the screen to open up certain things, which is quite normal. Equipment maintenance, which is usually the, the device care settings, is just pretty standard and basic. It says we've only got an hour and 25 left of battery life, which is not really something that says that we've got a 4,800 milliamp hour battery in here. So going to storage... If we go to phone storage here, it says that we have 128 gigs with 122 gig usable. So that's very interesting. General management, we can change the input and date and time. User and accounts. Let's see if we can add a Samsung account. No, we can't. This isn't a one-to-one -one Samsung clone, so I don't think they're gonna include sort of all of that. It's just the one UI interface that they've copied for the most part. Accessibility, uh, we can change certain things here. Nothing important. And we're back to about phone. All right, but otherwise, pretty basic. And using the phone feels fairly decent so far. It doesn't appear to be laggy or anything like that. It doesn't feel too bad. But we've got to dig into the specs and see what else we have. It also tries to mimic a 3D touch button as well on the home screen, but it's not. It's just the standard software keys on the screen. But I'm going to browser and go into Google. Let's just go to my YouTube channel. I'll go ahead and put on the P30 Pro clone video. So we'll just have a look and see what it looks like. Oh, is it gonna go full screen? Maybe not. That's very strange. Auto rotate was switched to off, but we'll try it now. Welcome back to another tech review. So six months ago, I had a look at a fake Huawei. Okay, so I've just changed the quality to 1080p, so we'll see if it can handle that. It says that it's got three cameras, and it says it's got six gig of RAM, 128 gigs of storage, a actual teardrop screen. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem to be very fast at all. It's very stuttery on 1080p. Maybe at 720p, it might be usable, but at this stage, it doesn't look too good. And I do have a very good Wi-Fi connection as well, so... It might be just the Wi-Fi itself in the device, who really knows? And as you can see here with the software hole punch, as I'm gonna call it, you can see the icons just underneath where the notifications are. They didn't bother to put in place that when someone rotates the phone, the notification bar at the top will still display stuff on the left side of the screen when it should be slightly moved over due to the hole punch, but it's there, fair enough. All right, so that wasn't exactly the best experience ever, but we'll keep having a look around the device and see what else we can find. Also to note that the battery life is dropping quite quickly as well, which is a bit concerning, but 4,800 milliamp hour, I just, yeah, I don't think that's got it in here. I'm just gonna quickly test the speaker as well, just to make sure. I don't think it's gonna be dual speakers. I think it's only just the bottom firing one here, but I'm gonna try it anyways.
it is a fairly loud speaker. It's a bit muffled and just doesn't sound the best, a bit distorted. I'm gonna try the actual YouTube app just quickly as well, just to see if there's any changes. I highly doubt that because it says that it only supports 2G and 3G in the listing, but we will see. So searching for available okay. networks, we... So the YouTube playback seems fairly good on 720p, so that's not too bad, but that indicates that the display is most likely a 720p display, but it's quite a nice 720p display, to be fairly honest. And the question as well, what does the Bixby button do? It's just Google Assistant. That's all it is. It's just Google Assistant. Hello, Google Assistant. What are you doing? There you go. That's fair. And otherwise, the volume buttons just do... Oh, that's a bit horrible. Okay. All right. Let's go ahead now and open up the camera and see what we're presented with. Okay. So the camera application itself here seems to be just auto-focusing on my desk. Um, but let's go ahead into the settings here. Okay, so it says 16 megapixels here for the picture size. And then video recording. It has EIS, which is okay. We'll also put the video quality on fine as well. And unfortunately, it seems that the other two cameras are fake ones, which as well we expected. Changing it to a front-facing camera, we can see that this one here is the camera and these are just the software ones, but that's pretty much it. I'll do some test shots with the camera and I'll edit them in after this bit here and see what they're like. Okay, so now we're testing the quality of the camera on the S10 clone. So I've just got a little gnome up against the wall here. So let's just go in for a quick zoom. I've got a very, very shaky camera happening here. And also just checking some color saturation here, just going down to have a look at this little stupid frog. There we go. I'm guessing that the front camera looks pretty terrible as well. What can I do? Okay, so you've seen the photos, and from what I'm seeing so far, it doesn't look that great. Just a very run-of-the-mill camera. I don't think it's 16 megapixels. But once we see the specs of this device with some of the applications that I will install, we'll see if this is actually a 16 megapixel camera or if it's something slightly lower. All right, let's go ahead and go to File Manager and start installing our applications. So the first one I like to install is Antutu. Now that Antutu is all installed, let's go ahead and open this up and see what we can find. Okay, so coming in here, we get the usual stuff, but it says S10, 9.1, 8 core. There's the 720 by 1480 display, which it says HD+, plus, so I guess they're kind of correct with that one. It does say 16 megapixels. We have the IMEI. RAM is 6 gig, but available is 1.75 gig. So, okay. System storage, 8 core processor. There's 8 cores, it says there, so yeah. Okay, uh, multi-touch. Let's just do this. I'm sorry, wait, 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 wait. Multi-touch test only comes back with one point multi-touch. Wow, okay, so you cannot use anything. You cannot use two fingers on it. It's just, it's one. Okay, that's a bit concerning. Camera says 16 megapixels, as well as the front one saying eight. 60% battery life. Um, 9.1 Android, but it doesn't seem like we can see anything here that might tell us what it's actually running. I would say maybe Android 7. That's being generous. I think it might be running Nougat, but we'll see. And we have the sensors here. We only have an accelerometer as well as a light sensor, proximity sensor, and that's it. Fairly basic, to be honest. So that's the first one. Let's move on to the second application. So the second one is just called CPU System Info. Someone asked me on the previous video what application it was, and that's what it's called. This one usually tells us quite a few things. Uh, it's the third application that I use that usually tells us the full specs. Opening this up, let's see what we have here. All right, so Android S10, S10, S10. That's all it says. MT6595, Android 9.1, Lollipop. So we are running Android version 5.0, which is Lollipop, which, yeah to be expected. MT6595, the CPU is getting quite hot to be fairly honest, and it's pretty cold in my room at the moment. Eight cores, we have a quad core, and the other cores are non-functioning or disabled, or it's just a quad core straight up. 
The render is a Mali 400 MP, which I expected as well. The memory, total internal memory is 16 gigabytes, which, yeah, not 128 gig, but 16 gig is not too bad. I mean, on the two devices that I showed earlier, one is 16 gig and one is 32 gig, so, you know, it's not too bad. The next one is RAM. I'm, I'm going to probably say 2 gig. Total RAM is 1 gig of RAM, with free RAM being 249 meg. Wow. So this is actually worse than the P30 Pro clone. The P30 Pro clone had 16 gig of storage, 2 gig of RAM, and I believe it had a quad-core processor as well, but this one only has 1 gig. So even though it's got USB-C, you're still dealing with 1 gig of RAM and 16 gig of storage, so that's a bit of a... Bit of a disappointment, but that's what we expected. I didn't expect this to have 60 gig of RAM and 128 gig storage, that's for sure. The screen size records it's 4.8 inches, but it's more so about a six inch display. And the DPI is 320 as well. The battery itself doesn't say the capacity here, but I think in the next one, we should be able to see what it says. And the rear camera here says that it's an eight megapixel. The front one says that it's a two megapixel. So I think we finally know what that is. And the next one here is just called CPU identifier. It doesn't really say anything else. That's all it is. Opening this up, it pretty much won't say much else from what we've already learnt, but we'll still go through it. OS, there we go, 9.1 Lollipop. And it says 6 gig of RAM in here, but we know that's not true. CPU is just the MT6595 and only a quad core. And the display is 720p, as we found out earlier as well. There we go, the memory there. You can see RAM installed, 6 gigabyte. Usable RAM is 5.25, but then free memory is 227 meg. So that's a good indication there. Storage does say 120 gig here, but we know that it's only 16 gig. Sometimes the applications are a bit weird. Sometimes the second one shows everything. Sometimes the third one shows everything. It just all depends on how well that the software is hiding the real specs sort of thing and what measures they've used to try and hide that. Okay, this application is not really uh, the best here. Okay, in battery settings, it does say 4,800 milliamp hours. I'm going to install another application just in case. And the last application will be CPU-Z. I'm just interested to see what it says. Okay, fairly basic here. Yep, quad-core, S10, 720p. Available RAM says 1.5 gig, but yeah, that's not true, unfortunately. Internal storage, 128 gig, yeah. Pretty much everything else in CPU-Z is quite normal, so I think I get a rough idea of what the specs are. I might have to tear this down further to actually see the specs inside of this, but as I said, I think I've got a fair idea of what this is running. I decided to install Need for Speed No Limits on this device since I know it runs perfect on my Note 9. I just wanted to see if it would actually run well enough or not. And launching the game to actual gameplay took 3 minutes and 40 seconds, which isn't anything to be proud about. Well anyways, here's some gameplay footage. I also tried to install PUBG as well as the new Call of Duty mobile game, but nothing shows in the Play Store. If you Google them and try to install them from there, it just comes up with a message saying that this application cannot be installed on your device. So, just thought I'd share that with you all. So, I've tested the quality of calls on this device and uh, it's, it's, it's average. It's average at best. Speak is not too bad, but uh, yeah, so be it. Also, just another note, I just want to compare the thickness of the device between the Huawei Nova 2e and the clone here. And as you can see, it is a little bit chunkier than the 2e, but it's definitely not as slim as the real deal S10 is. It will be interesting to take this apart and see what's inside of it. And I'm probably going to do this as a little bonus after this video. And I know this video is going to go for quite a long time, but I just wanted to be in depth with everything and make sure that I've covered every topic possible. So with all that being said and done, I've tested everything that I need to test, the camera, I've seen the specs, the display, 
fingerprint, all that sort of stuff. And for $144 Australian or $100 US, this is the kind of device you're getting. And with one gig of RAM, 16 gig of storage, and not offering an Android Go edition, it's not really that great and camera wise is also just a bit of a disappointment some of nokia's budget offerings at the moment are a lot better than what this is for sure but the reason why i had the two phones at the start of this video is to show that in australia if you just looked around and had a look for secondhand phones you can pick up a decent one for around the 50 dollars mark or if you want something that yeah might have a bit of a crack in it but still is quite capable for everyday use you know 75 dollars even the budget phones that are offered by Vodafone, Telstra, and Optus in Australia are much more better than this spec-wise, and you've got a warranty with it, and just this is just, you don't know what it is, really. It's just a mishmash of certain components, and the specs are just unknown. It says that it has 6 gigabytes of RAM and 128 gig storage and a 4800 milliamp hour battery, but that's not true at all. I just don't want you guys out there who see this and go, hey, this is a really good deal, and buy it, only to know that you get it and it's a very disappointing experience and it probably won't last long. You don't have that much of a warranty anyways. It's just unfortunate that people get sucked into buying devices like this all the time. I buy these and have a look at them so then you don't have to spend your money on something like this. And if you have spent your money on a device like this, use the same applications that I've shown in this video to check the specifications and double check them all. And even if it says, you know, 2 gig of RAM instead of 6 gig of RAM, it's still not as advertised and thus you should be entitled to either a partial refund or send the item back and get a full refund. Wherever you buy it from will decide on the fate of the refund as well. Okay, so all in all, with this here, I'm going to give you the advertised specs here as well as the specs that are actually on this device just here. So feel free to pause the video and have a read of them. And just for the novelty of it, here's the S10 and S10 Plus specs as well, just so you can see the difference of what you're actually getting. All right, and that is it for this S10 clone bought from Joom for $144 Australian or $100 US. It is unfortunately not as advertised and it's just... It does have USB-C, which is a positive. Um, the display isn't too bad, that's a positive. But the 1 gig of RAM and 16 gig of storage, 16 gig of storage isn't bad, but it's the 1 gig of RAM and the quad core, which really, really does let this down. On top of the launcher as well, which is hogging up most of the RAM, it's just, yeah, it's not a practical device. It's only something as a novelty, but don't go to Wish or Doom or something like that and buy a device like this that's so cheap expecting it to replace, you know, your flagship phone from two years ago or something like that. It's just not worth it. Don't trust your data on these. They do pop up with ads over time, so it's just a very big buyer beware. Make sure you do your research before purchasing any of these devices. If it's an actual Samsung Galaxy S10, you know, of course you'll be fine, but if it's something that's on Wish or Joom or something like that, one of those random websites that says, yeah, it does have this and does have that, you just have to be really, really careful. But I think that will do it for this video, so I thank you very much for watching this really, really long video covering all of the topics that I've discussed on this phone. It has just hit midnight, so that means I'm going to finish this one up. And you can find my Discord link as well as my Instagram in the description below. And you can also find the previous P20 Pro and P30 Pro clone videos that are carted up here the whole time. Check them out and feel free to watch the other technology videos that I've posted as well if you're interested in all this sort of stuff. Uh, but anyways, I will keep doing more of this sort of thing because I do like covering this sort of stuff. Just unfortunately, these videos go for a long amount of time and I just ramble and ramble and ramble, but I just want to cover everything. But I think I've managed to do that quite well. Anyways, I'm going to stop here. Thank you once again for watching. I really, really do appreciate it. And I'll see you all in the next video, whatever that may be. Let's go ahead and switch this off. If you like this content, feel free to leave a like or a dislike if you didn't. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next video.